not only looks like a rainbow, it actually tastes like a rainbow too. Win win. This cake is vibrant and bursting with flavour. Sweetness and sourness, warming notes, refreshing flavours, pops of nuttiness, punchy bursts of fruit and hints of perfume all in one. I don't know about you, but doesn't it bother you when a cake doesn't taste as good as it looks? You know what I mean? The amount of people concentrate so much on making it look beautiful and it just don't taste as good as it looks. For example, have you had a fluffy cupcake topped with, let's say, a pink swirl of velvety buttercream? Now, you're looking at it, now your eyes are telling your brain, this is strawberry. Your brain's telling your mouth or your tongue is strawberry. So you bite in, it's vanilla. Vanilla? Now don't get me wrong, I do love vanilla, but the whole colour and flavour thing gets me excited. So one without the other, it just ain't happening. But this cake, this cake has flavour. This cake has colour and this has more, 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 more jam-packed flavour. This is just going to be the best, 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 best rainbow cake in the world. Now let's get started. Add two tablespoons of milk to six separate bowls. And to each bowl, add a pea sized amount of food gel colour. I'm using red, orange, yellow, green, blue and purple because I want my layers to be a rainbow but you can choose whatever colours you want. Just make sure to use food gel colour or food gel paste rather than liquid food colour because the liquid colour will make your batter more runny and the colour won't be as vibrant. When you're done, set your bowls to one side and we can get onto the important part, the flavour. Because this cake is all about the flavour. Everyone's attention visually with the rainbow colours and you'll not only tickle but actually wham bam thank you ma'am tickle their taste buds satisfy them yeah with the flavour because that's what cooking's all about it's all about the flavour for a light sweet and sour flavour add your freeze dried raspberries to your red milk going to add the zest and juice of one orange to brighten up the orange layer and also to give it the warming notes that oranges give. Now get ready for the yellow layer because it hits you from every lemony angle of its sour and refreshing citrus notes and screams. Hi, I'm Mr. Lemony. <laughs> I'm adding the zest of two lemons to impart a perfumey lemony taste and the juice of two lemons for that added tartness. You know the taste that makes your eyes squint small and you get a tingle in your cheek? Now dip your finger in and taste a bit. If you ain't squinting and you ain't tingling, your lemons ain't big enough. Just add a little bit more. Now add your pistachios to your blender and blitz until powdery. You can also do this in a pestle and mortar or you can add your nuts to a sandwich bag and bash them with a rolling pin or a saucepan or anything heavy. Just make sure you seal the bag before you start bashing. Because pistachios have a very distinct rich nutty flavour, they're going to make the green layer pop and give the cake a whole other dimension, but still complement the rest of the cake, especially the raspberry layer. If you have a spoonful of pistachio and raspberry together, oh my, what a beautiful explosion of yumminess in your mouth. In my blender, I'm adding my frozen blueberries and blitzing them to a mush. Anyway, add this to your milk. 
I'm going to embellish my last layer with a hint of lavender. But I'm only going to add one tablespoon because the lavender has a light perfuming note to start with then a big sweet and sour wallop at the end. So remember, don't use a lot or your cake will end up tasting like soap. Now I'm cake butter. Add 750 grams of unsalted room temperature butter and 750 grams of caster sugar to the bowl of your stand mixer and beat with your paddle attachment on a medium to high speed until light and fluffy for at least 8 minutes. Don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl every minute to make sure all the butter and sugar are fully incorporated. This is yellow and this is white. This is yellow because this hasn't been incorporated in with the rest of the bar, so make sure you get that down as well, not just the sides. Get everywhere that you see there's butter, make sure it's all pushed down and mixed in. Whilst the butter and sugar is beaten away, let's get cracking on cracking our egg. Crack 10 eggs into a large bowl and give them a brief whisk. shade as the bowl. Just to make sure it's really really white and you can see how fluffy and airy look at that. Okay, the Turn your mixer back onto a medium speed and add the eggs in about six to seven stages. Make sure to mix well between each stage. And don't forget to scrape down the side. Whilst eggs are beaten away, I'm going to weigh my flour. I'm going to put a large bowl and my sieve on my scales to save myself time and bowls by sieving at the same time as weighing. Just don't forget to zero your scales before you start. I like to use self-raising cake flour rather than regular self-raising flour because it makes the cakes light and fluffy. And this is because the cake flour has been sifted more times than the regular one. Mix on a low speed until the flour disappears and remember to stop and scrape down the sides a few times to get the bits of flour that happen to always stick to the sides off of the bowl. Whilst the flour is incorporating, let's multitask and get our pans ready. So grease your pan with some butter and dust with flour all over the base and the sides. I'm going to use loose bottom pans because they're easier to get the cake out and less likely to fall apart when I'm trying to get it out. I've got a great tip for you that you can use with any cake that you end up having loads of glaze in. What you do is you get your batter and then you weigh it and then you divide the, whatever the batter weighs by how many layers you have and then you're guaranteed to have even layers. If you don't have six cake tins, don't worry. What you're going to have to do is wait for each cake to cook and then cool, then rewash, dry, grease, and flow your pans again and carry on baking until all your layers are done. 
And add your delicious flavour batter to your cake tin and spread it out evenly to the edges. And then pick your cake tin up and bash it onto your work surface. This will get rid of any air bubbles and give you a flatter top. Now bake in the oven at 170 degrees for around 20 minutes. When it said beat your butt until light and fluffy, I used to beat my butt for a few minutes until it was lighter and fluffier, but it didn't taste like the ones I'd get at the shop. And I used to always wonder, what was it? Was it their, their butter, their mixture, their recipe? I didn't know, but then I found out. I know the secret, and the secret lies in the time. So the longer you beat your butter for, in this case, eight minutes, the more lighter and fluffier and cloud-like your buttercream will end up being. So that's why in my recipe I've said beat for eight minutes. So no scrimping on seven, seven and a half minutes. Eight minutes, yeah, and you'll have creamy, dreamy buttercream that everyone's going to want to eat, but you're not going to want to share because it's I've cubed 450 grams of unsalted butter and I'm going to beat it on a high speed for 5 minutes until it's light and fluffy. If you don't have a stand mixer you can also do this with a handheld mixer and you'll still get the same result, just beat for an extra 2-3 to three minutes. My butter is beaten away so I'm going to weigh and sieve my icing sugar. I need 1 kilo of icing sugar but I'm going to add it in 2 stages. So I've weighed 500 grams first and sieved it and I'm going to add it to my lovely fluffy butter and then beat it on a medium to high speed for about 3 minutes. Whilst it's beating away, weigh and sieve your last 500 grams of icing sugar, then add that too and beat for another 3 to 4 minutes. To unite all the flavours together, add a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. If you don't have vanilla bean paste, you can also use vanilla extra or the seeds from a vanilla bean pod. People usually add milk to their buttercream to loosen it up a bit. But for this cake, adding milk makes the buttercream taste too rich, which takes away the impact of all the other flavours. But adding the water loosens the buttercream just enough for uniting each layer whilst taking a back seat and being a compliment. To test if your cakes are cooked, you can use a skewer, toothpick or a knife and just place it in the centre of the cake. If it comes out clean, it's cooked. If not, put it in for a few more minutes and test again. Leave the cakes to cool in the tins for about 15 minutes, then place them on a cooling rack to cool completely. I'm going to need to move my cakes around quite a bit, so I've placed each cake in a piece of greaseproof paper to make moving them around easier and less likely for me to break them. My cakes are all cool and kind of colourful, but these brown crusty edges and tops from baking in the tins are blocking the rainbow from shining its true colours. So we need to get rid of these mucky edges and tops, plus can you see these tops are not at all even. And we want to slice into our cakes and see perfect bright colourful layers, not mucky wonky ones. I'm going to start with my raspberry red layer and holding my serrated edge knife or a bread knife horizontally against the lowest edge I'm going to saw up and down across to the other side whilst holding the knife as straight as possible. Now that's what I'm talking about. Look at how much redder it is. Now I've got to get rid of the nasty crusty edges so when we cut into the cake each layer looks vibrant from edge to edge. I've got a 6 inch cake drum which is a little bit smaller than my cake. You can also use the base of a 6 inch loose bottom cake tin. I'm going to place it in the centre of my cake and with a pointy edge knife I'm going to gently cut around the drum. Be careful when doing this and hold your knife as vertically straight as you can because you can cut too much of the cake off if you cut diagonally inward and also tear the silver off of the cake drum. Getting rid of the edges not only lets the cake shine its true colour but it also guarantees a soft fluffy sponge throughout without any crispy edges. I'm 
I know it can seem a bit scary because you think you're going to mash the whole cake up, but take your time, keep your knife horizontal, don't let it move diagonally down and I bet you'll be able to do it. Plus, if you don't give it a go and you use wonky layers, I'm pretty sure you'll mash the cake up anyway. Because the wonky layers are like stacking triangles and squares and circles on top of one another and in the end they'll end up collapsing anyway because they don't have an even surface to lay on. And if you do end up making the hole in the cake, don't worry about it. Just add some extra buttercream and fill in the hole, just like a plasterer. It's better that than the whole cake falling apart. Leveling off the tops and trimming off the sides is like one of the most important steps in this cake because we want to give our guests a dish that satisfies visually as well as tastefully. I wonder if that's even a word. Because we put so much effort into the flavour and the colour of this cake that we need to also put just as much love and care into its appearance too, even if it takes a bit longer. I'm adding my cake drum to the centre of my turntable and then I'm going to put a dollop of buttercream in the centre and spread it out a bit so my bottom layer will have something to stick to and also it will be a good solid foundation for the rest of the layers on top of it. Now press it down to make sure it's proper stuck down. Now that we've got even layers, I also want to have an even filling throughout the whole cake. So I'm going to measure one third of a cup of buttercream for each layer. It may not seem a lot, but it's enough because you're going to have one third of a cup between all the layers. Now place one third of a cup of buttercream on top of your perfumey lavender layer and spread it evenly with an offset spatula. Then place your fruity blueberry layer on top and give it a firm but gentle push down to stick it to the buttercream. Then on with another one third of a cup of fluffy vanilla buttercream and spread evenly on top. Now continue repeating this process with the rest of your layers and try not to get your yellow and your orange layer mixed up. Now I'm going to add a nice tight crumb coat. What this is, is a thin layer of buttercream around the sides and the top of the cake and what the buttercream does is catch any crumbs and keeps them locked into the cake, sort of like a spider's web. Oops, um, a bit of my raspberry has just fallen off. If that happens to you, don't worry. I'll show you in a moment how to fix it. I'm working with my spatula back and forth around the outside edges of the cake and pushing in the buttercream into every nook and cranny. Also crumb coat the top as well, driving in the buttercream. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy, but it has to be covered completely. So if you made any holes in your cake, just fill them up with buttercream. It will harden in the fridge and no one will be none the wiser. Plus whoever gets that piece will end up getting extra buttercream, so I think they'll be happy. And then put it in the fridge for at least an hour to harden and set. My buttercream is set, so now I'm going to add a generous amount of buttercream to the sides. Then add a dollop of buttercream to the top and smooth it out as flat as you can with a small offset spatula. I'm holding my reel against the cake board, holding it up vertically to smooth it out beautifully. You may need to add more buttercream to fill in any gaps to get the sides as even as possible. And you may need to do this quite a few times, but what you'll end up with is a cake with beautiful smooth sides. When you're happy with your edges, take your offset spatula or bench scraper, make sure it's clean and drag in that ledge of frosting from the top back into the centre. And continue going until you're happy with your cake. I'm going to decorate my cake with my rainbow gelatin bubbles. All you have to do is push them gently into the buttercream and you're done. If you'd like to know how to make these rainbow gelatin bubbles, check in the description box below where I'll leave a link to the video. I'm so excited, I can't wait to reveal the layers of this cake. You know what? What can I say? Things happen. Just learn from me and hold the top of your cake whilst cutting it. Anyway, here's some pics of the rest of the cake. Now this is what I call a rainbow cake. Bright, even layers and filling and jam-packed full of different flavours. 
And you know what makes this cake extra special? You can play with it. Just blindfold someone and have them guess the flavour. Now who said you should have played with your food? Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe below. And if you do end up making this delicious rainbow cake, let me know what you thought about the flavour combinations in the comments below. And tag me in your rainbow cake pictures on Instagram. So until next time, bye! Hi! Hi! <laughs>